This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, DeLand, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or email at jennifer.smith, the number two, at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399, by phone at 850-414-4753, or email at Jacqueline.Paramore, J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-I-N-E dot Paramore, P-A-R-A-M-O-R-E, at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign in the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. This is the first of two public meetings for this corridor study. The purpose of this meeting is to one, gather local input and understand what your experience along the corridor has been. Two, obtain your input on the potential alternatives and recommendations to improve the corridor. And three, discuss your local knowledge and history of the corridor. The project team has been and will continue to work closely with all the key local stakeholders, which includes Volusia County, City of Daytona Beach, City of Holly Hill, and the local transit agency, Votran. We want to collect meaningful input and objectively assess the needs and opportunities based on data, information, and local experiences. This corridor study is being conducted to engage all users, which includes drivers, pedestrians, cyclists, and transit users. The department's commitment to safety for all users is key to a successful project as the team evaluates the data collected, identify the safety needs, and recommend improvements. Safety is everyone's responsibility as we work towards the goal of zero fatalities. This planning study will recommend short-term improvement strategies to meet the user's needs and address safety concerns. This is a multimodal corridor planning study, which is the very first step in FDOT's project development process. Planning studies determine the best way to serve existing and future travel demand. The studies identify the transportation issues by closely examining the existing and expected future conditions within each study area, including the design of the existing transportation facilities, transit services available, accommodation of non-motorized modes of transportation, traffic volumes, levels of congestion, and potentially unsafe conditions. The study team will evaluate the corridor looking at different planning strategies, such as land use, transportation, and other strategies to determine which improvements will be recommended for the next phase. Planning studies determine the best way to serve existing and future travel demand. Coincidentally, the department has tentatively programmed funds for the resurfacing of Mason Avenue within the study limits. Design is scheduled for 2023 and construction is scheduled for 2025. The goal is to include the recommendations from the study into the resurfacing project. Potential improvements might include access management improvements, raised crosswalks, left turn lanes, and fill in sidewalk gaps to name a few. This project was requested by local municipalities to coordinate the development of a future vision for Mason Avenue, State Road 430, that establishes a multimodal approach to providing future transportation needs. This study is a community-based evaluation to determine how best to meet the needs of current and future users. 
This study will concentrate on the 2.37 mile stretch of Mason Avenue from Clyde Morris Boulevard to North Beach Street, also known as Riverside Drive, north of Mason Avenue. The thoroughfare is an east-west corridor with a posted speed limit of 35 miles an hour. Mason Avenue is also a designated hurricane evacuation route. The next slides will illustrate the existing cross-section at various points of the corridor. We will make our way from the west end of the corridor to the east end. Our first typical section, typical section A, is at a location between Clyde Morris Boulevard and west of Nova Road, as well as from Nova Road to the Florida East Coast FEC railway tracks. The cross-section shows a five-foot sidewalk on both sides of Mason Avenue with four 11-foot travel lanes and no center separator. Next, typical section B is at a location between the shopping center west of Nova Road and Nova Road, as well as a small stretch between Highland Avenue and Daytona Avenue east of US-1. The cross-section shows a five-foot sidewalk on both sides of Mason Avenue with four 11-foot travel lanes with an 11-foot two-way center left turn lane. Next, typical section C is at a location between the Carswell Avenue and Highland Avenue. The cross section shows a five-foot sidewalk on both sides of Mason Avenue with four 11-foot travel lanes with a center median varying between 16 and 17 feet. Our last typical section, typical section D, is at a location at the eastern limits of our study area from Daytona Avenue to North Beach Street, Riverside Avenue. This cross section shows a five foot sidewalk and a four foot bicycle lane on both sides of Mason Avenue with four 11 foot travel lanes with a center median varying between 20 and 25 feet. The majority of the corridor consists of an undivided four-lane facility. The absence of a center turn lane and or dedicated left turn lanes requires vehicles making a left turn to wait in the through lane, which could contribute to potential rear-end collisions. Within other spot locations, specifically east of the railroad tracks, there is a median or center left turn lane available. The travel lanes and center left turn lane are 11 feet wide with five foot sidewalks where a sidewalk is available. The intent of the study is to work within the existing right of way limits. The majority of the corridor has 70 feet of available right of way with spot locations with 80 feet or more. The corridor accommodates approximately 20,700 vehicles per day in 2021. There are eight Votran bus stops along Mason Avenue between Derbyshire Road and Nova Road. This supports the Votran route number six. Our team analyzed the existing conditions to identify the corridor users and needs. Based on our team's analysis of the corridor, we noted signals were operating at acceptable conditions during the morning and afternoon rush hours with the occasional backup at the railroad crossing when a train came through. There were 18 pedestrian crashes and 15 bicycle crashes that occurred throughout the corridor within the past five years. Pedestrian and bicycle mobility and safety along the corridor is critical, and more opportunities to cross the street are needed, particularly around Sunnyland Park. The team verified the existing conditions from aerial photography and walking the corridor. In addition, looking at the existing data, such as the number of crashes within the past five years, the team has identified multiple potential safety concerns. These include multiple offset intersections, which could contribute to longer signal timings, driver confusion, sight distance concerns, and pedestrian safety. Limited dedicated left turn lanes, limited to no bicycle lanes along the corridor as cyclists were observed to use the existing sidewalks when available. Sidewalks are generally available throughout the corridor with the exception of a few spot locations as well as the north side of Mason Avenue between Nova Road and the FEC Railroad Crossing. No bicycle facilities are available with the exception of the Mason Avenue segment east of Daytona Avenue. Lack of proper drainage and minimal bus stop amenities to name a few. 
The corridor needs can be distinguished and summarized by four different modes or users on the corridor. For motorists, there is a need to improve corridor safety, intersection safety, and address congestion at specific intersections as there are several wide driveways and other driveways with limited sight distance. For cyclists and pedestrians, there is a need for a safe, continuous facility throughout the corridor and additional opportunities to cross Mason Avenue to improve access between land uses, specifically evaluating the ability to construct a sidewalk where one does not exist today. For transit riders, there is a need to improve the ADA accessibility at transit stops. The majority of the VOTRAN stops are identified by standalone bus stop posts only. As previously mentioned, this is the first of two public meetings. We want to receive your feedback and the team wants to hear about your experience driving, walking, cycling, or taking the bus along Mason Avenue. This experience provides the team with additional details of how best to develop improvement recommendations. Our next step will be to meet again with our project team and review the feedback we receive. Using input from this public meeting, we will identify a recommended planning alternative, present to the project team, and then present to you during the second public meeting. A final report will be prepared and published, which is anticipated to be completed by August of this year, 2022. The goal of this study is to provide a list of recommendations which will be incorporated into next year's resurfacing project design phase. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by February 2nd, 14 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. To submit comments in person, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. If you are participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 4467 you may also contact the project manager directly by email at ennis.davis at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida. 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386 943 5422 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, we thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have any comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by February 2nd, 2022. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project website at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash four four six seven five six dash one. Have a good evening.